What's up, students? I hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, we are going to pretty much wrap up work, power, and energy, this whole unit. And the last thing that we have to talk about is power. Okay, so today we're going to give a definition of power, show the formula, and then do some pretty basic examples using that formula. Because essentially, power is the rate at which work is done. Or we can say the rate at which energy is used. All right, and this is all about pretty much how fast, okay? That's what rate means. How fast can we do work? All right, and pretty much this pretty much says if I have person one and I have person two, right? And let's say they each do a thousand joules of work. So the work is equal to 1,000 joules for each of these people. All right, person one does 1,000 joules of work and so does person two. But person one does it in a T equal to 120 seconds, where person one does it in 60, or person two does it in 60 seconds. We say that person two has a greater power. The works were equal, but the power, this time factor, is what changed anything. So if we look at this in terms of symbols, we have power, is the rate at which we do work. So we say that P equals W over T. And power, guys, has a unit of Watt, capital W. And guys, we have to remember, don't confuse this with work, W, okay? Work W is a variable. This, guys, is a unit, guys, okay? So especially in this topic where we're talking about work and power all at the same times, sometimes I'll see students confuse what that W actually means, okay? And another acceptable way, because this is work time sign, you can express the unit as joules per second. That's okay, you know? But I just want you to know that if you see joules per second, we're talking about power. But if I say watts, this is gonna be the more conventional way that we are going to express power. And remember, there's a couple different substitutions. Work is equal to F cosine theta X. So therefore, I could say that power equals F cosine theta X, the expression for work, over time. And that's not given on your reference table at all. And we also know that X over T equals V bar. So another way that I can express this, and we'll just assume that we're on a horizontal surface moving in a horizontal direction. So we'll get rid of this cosine. We can say that power equals F times V bar as well. Okay, so you guys have to remember these substitutions because they are not given on your reference table. So let's take a look at some examples of how we can use these formulas to solve for power. Let's say I have a box and this box has a mass equal to 75 kilograms, okay? And I am going to apply a force to this box, Fa, to move it and displacement equal to six meters. And I want to know how much power is outputted if it takes 20 seconds to complete that action. So we'll come up here, we'll say power equals force times distance over time. And guys, once again, that was just work divided by time. So I plug in my FA, if I gave you that FA of 300 Newtons, so this is also given. So we have 300 Newtons times six meters of motion divided by 20 seconds, we will say that there was an overall power equal to 90 watts. That is how you solve for the power when given a force, a displacement, and a time. Let's look at another example where we'll have an elevator. And this elevator has a mass equal to 1,000 kilograms. 
So it is big. It is going to move upwards with a V bar equal to 8 meters per second. All right. And I want to know how much power is outputted by the elevator's motor. Okay. So we have power equals work over time, which equals FD over T, which equals F V bar. And we see from our givens, we have a V bar here. So I assume that I'm going to have to use this formula right here. But we don't know what the force is. Well, this object has a weight FG. And when I lift something upwards with a force, I have to oppose that, right? So this is going to be the applied force. And when I am at a constant speed, FA equals FG. So the force that I'm overcoming is actually the weight of the elevator times the speed of this particular motor. I plug in, I have a thousand kilograms times 10 meters per second squared times the V bar, which is eight meters per second. We see that I have a power now of 8,000 watts and some might simplify this as saying 80 kilowatts of power. So that's pretty basic, guys. That's how we find power using these two different variations of the power formula. I'll catch you on the next one.